Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizers, in particular, uh, Professor Raquel Camargo and Roberto Giordano for the kind invitation for coming here and to Foz de Iguazú as well. I'm going to talk uh, about two different subjects here and the, in Foz. And um, I uh, suggest uh, Roberto to talk, uh, let's say, uh, a recent uh, happy ending uh, story. <laughs> uh, uh, there are not many of, of those. <laughs> and uh, that we have uh, 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 performed in, in our institute during the last 12 years, then this is going to be a summary of about 12 years of work. And I will emphasize not only in the technical part, as the other talks, but in the other parts. Not necessarily the technical. Of course, there are, there are science behind this. But of course, uh, my emphasis in this talk was the, uh, relating to the experience being a professor uh, turned to an entrepreneur and founder of a spin-off company and dealing with the conflict of interest of uh, prof university professors and uh, university interests and private company interests, etc. And, uh, well, I, I hope uh, 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 it would be useful for perhaps to encourage other spin-offs and other experiences uh, in other countries. I have to say that also that uh, I understand better now why the reasons why Brazil is such a, a great country uh, if somebody is able to have 100 people in an auditorium on a Sunday. And, and the speakers talking on Sunday as well, <laughs> they, that is a great country. Well, um, as I told you, uh, my, my main field of research is uh, biochemical engineering, but more dedicated to the mixing and hydrodynamic aspects, which I'm going to cover in FOSS. I'm not going to talk about hydrodynamics or mixing in this particular talk, Although it's a, another kind of mixing, mixing uh, uh, expertises, mixing people, uh, mixing uh, 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 different subjects and different disciplines. Well, uh, the, the, the story begins, uh, uh, the driving force of this project was that uh, Mexico is one of the, the uh, most important world exporters of mango the fruit mango, and it's, uh, uh, it's round about the, the fifth and the third and the second place, depending on the other markets. But uh, the, uh, Mexico exports nearly 300,000 tons of mango, to the, uh, mainly to the United States, to Europe, and to Japan. That's the main uh, ex export market. Nevertheless, uh, this constitutes only nearly 14% of the overall mango production in Mexico. Uh, there is a, a great opportunity in the export mango markets, but there is a, an important problem, that the quality of the mangoes. Then the exporters, uh, I will tell you later, but the exporters cannot export more mango, more mangoes uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in these countries, just because they could not get enough amount of mango of good quality to export. That's, that's the main reason. Then, of course, this, this uh, 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 number, this figure could be considerably higher. And uh, one of the main problems of uh, mango is the, the, the disease which is called anthracnose, which is characterized for uh, uh, having these uh, uh, dots, stains in the, on, the, on the surface of, of the mango. And this is caused by a, by a fungi, Coletotrichum glosporoides. And th this is the fungi. And this fungi can infect the, the flowers, the leaves. Even, for instance, in this case, it could uh, 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 infect the, the branches. Uh, and in the infection is here, then this would be a mango. And it is not anymore. And the, uh, the final symptoms of, the, of this uh, disease is this uh, 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 ugly uh, 
uh, black dots or stains in, in the mango. Of course, this uh, limits, importantly, the, the exportation of the mango. We, in Mexico, we can eat very easily these mangoes. There is no problem. If you peel it, then they are perfectly nice, and then you can eat it. But you cannot export these, these mangoes, of course. And this, is, uh, this disease is perhaps the most important uh, and the most uh, uh, damaging disease of mango, which affects nearly 60% of the worldwide production in every country. There are several, several mango varieties, as shown here, but uh, there are more susceptible or less susceptible, but practically all of them suffers from this disease. Then uh, what, what the, did, the, did the growers, mango growers, uh, do? They have to use, of course, fungicides, chemical fungicides. But they have a problem. If they, if they don't use the chemical fungicide, they, of course, cannot get uh, the quality of the mangoes in order to be able to export them. But if they use the fungicide, particularly at the end of the harvest, nearly, near, near the harvest, Although the mango quality could be, could be good, then they, they cannot export uh, neither because of the residues of the chemicals. Because this is very, in these markets are very restrictive in terms of the resi chemical residues uh, uh, allowing, allowing in, in some particular product. This is a dilemma. Then if you, use, if you don't use the, the chemical fungicide, you don't get the quality. But if you use the fungicide, you can get the quality, but you cannot export the mangoes because of the residuality. Then uh, the, the mango exports uh, have a terrible problem. Then uh, we use a different approach, a biological approach. So we are biotechnologists. And um, uh, the concept of bio biological control, for those who are not familiar with these terms, is uh, the definition can be said as, as uh, the reduction of plant disease using organisms that are phytopathogen antagonists. And of course, they have several advantages. They are non-toxic, they are very specific. And uh, the, perhaps one of the problems is that the, this is an advantage, but also a disadvantage for the, for the developers of the, of the product, as I will tell you later, because it's a long-term strategy. And mango producers are not interested in the harvest of 10 uh, years in advance or, or ahead. They, they are interested in the harvest of today. Then if you say, well, if you use this product, perhaps in three years' time, you will get better results. Uh, it's very difficult. And you will see how we manage with this problem. Of course, the... Uh, uh, there are very few commercial products worldwide uh, for, which use the, the concept of biological control, in particular for phytopathogens. There are many uh, products already in the market for biological insecticides, for instance. The Bacillus thuringiensis is, is, is uh, uh, well, one of them. But not for phytopathogens. And then we thought that we, as a, we had a, a niche in which we could uh, 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 do something interesting. And uh, the problem is that, the, in general, if you review the literature, the scientific literature, there are plenty of papers describing antagonists of phytopathogens. And perhaps if you review uh, the literature every month, every issue of a microbiology uh, journal has a paper on an antagonist of a, of a phytopathogen. But uh, on the contrary, the, the commer there, there was a, a, a boom in, in the scientific literature, but there was no commercial products available on the market. And the problem, the, the general strategy to, to develop uh, biological control uh, uh, products, we, we have to select the, the antagonists. We have to, uh, and this is mainly where all the, the papers uh, finish the work. They, they isolate a, a, a strain, they, they, they try the proof of concept, and they publish the paper. Okay? And but very few address the, the, the other problems 
in order to become this, this uh, uh, scientific knowledge in, into technology. This process should have been scaled up. And one particular and important point is the formulation. You can develop uh, a very good, uh, isolate a very good strain, but if you don't formulate properly, and then you cannot apply in the field, then the, the, even the best uh, candidate isolate is, is useless. And finally, the, some of the things that university professors are not used to is the registration or marketing aspects. Then, provided you have a, a, a very nice strain, perhaps you, uh, we as engineers could scale up the, pro the, the, process, the fermentation process and the downstream process, uh, perhaps we can uh, uh, solve the problem of the formulation, but still, if you ha have solved all these problems, you cannot sell that product in the market. You need to be registered uh, before the uh, health uh, institutions of your country and the agriculture uh, uh, regulatory issues in your particular country. Then, I I'm going to use this slide because it's the, the, the timeline of the process that started in late the 1990 and uh, the commercialization was achieved in uh, 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 the end of the last year. And I will use this uh, timeline to, to describe some of the highlights of the, of the aspects of, of, of the development from the, uh, the Petri dish to the commercial product. First, uh, we started a collaboration with a, a phytopathologist group in the north of the country, in other, another research center, which is called Centro de Investigación en Alimentación y Desarrollo, which is in the northern states of uh, Sinaloa, in Mexico, which is the main uh, exporter of mango of Mexico. State of Sinaloa is the main exporter of mango. And we are biochemical engineers, and they are uh, phytopathologists. And then we started a project uh, because they had some interesting strains uh, as antagonism. Uh, this is the, uh, a Petri dish in which you inoculate the, the, the isolate in the corners. And this is the growth of the, of the pathogen. As you can see, uh, there are some in inhibiting zones of um, the growth of the pathogen, indicating that these uh, uh, isolates, bacterial isolates, are producing uh, uh, compounds uh, which are uh, uh, antagonists to the, to the fungi. Uh, we started a, a, a first contact in, in, in the year 2000 between these two research. And this is just a summary uh, of the work we did the, in these years. Uh, it was the, the basic microbiology work in terms of the, we took uh, field samples uh, uh, hundreds of, of these uh, isolates, mainly bacteria and mainly yeast that we isolate from the phylosphere of the, of the mango trees. And we uh, conducted a number of uh, in vitro cultures. Uh, we isolate the, the, the strains. We started with some in vitro assays, mainly for, for antibiosis of these uh, strains. Finally, we identified eight candidates. We tested that candidates in a greenhouse, and then by the end of 2003, we have two candidates for semi-commercial trials, one which was uh, Bacillus subtilis uh, bacteria, and a uh, Gis rhodotorula minuta. This was the, uh, uh, the two isolates that uh, we conducted more research uh, in, the, in the different stage. Of course, after the microbiology work, is, uh, the engineering, the biochemical engineering work has to be done. And then we started to produce this in, in fermenters, in our pilot plan, in, in, in our institute. This is the, uh, an overview of the, of the process. We start with the, uh, with the bacteria, for instance, in this case. Uh, we develop uh, liquid cultures, then we scale it off in a bioreactor of 30 liters. We later scale it off uh, uh, the process to a 350 liters uh, fermenter. 
at the beginning, when we were developing the, uh, the formulation, we collected in a centrifuge and then we developed a liquid formulation. In order, just to give you an idea, in order to, to make the proof of concept studies of this formulation, uh, the, I would say this formulation was not very stable and it, it required uh, uh, refrigeration uh, because the, the, uh, um, the viability of the bacteria decreases drastically in the liquid formulations. And but because we thought that we had a very good uh, uh, bacillus strain, a very potent antagonist to, the, to this fungi, uh, we produced this in the morning in Cuernavaca. And there, from the airport of Cuernavaca, we took a plane to Sinaloa. And uh, then the fermentation ended at 6 o'clock. At 8 o'clock, we were in the airport uh, exporting the, well, not exporting, but uh, transporting the, the liquid formulation to the state of Sinaloa. And they were applying the biofungicide uh, around noon in, in Sinaloa. Of course, that would be very, it would be impossible for, for a commercial product to do, in the, to do in that way. But the idea was to try uh, the, the strains in the fields, not in the greenhouses, but in the fields of mango orchards. And then we uh, carry out the preliminary test fields in, in, this, in the state of, of Sinaloa. This is a typical mango tree. In the, in the north of the country, and then we are putting our, our formulation here. Uh, it, it is spread as a normal uh, pesticide. Uh, the, it doesn't need any special equipment to, to apply. The, the normal equipment that in which, by which they apply insecticides or uh, growth promoters or whatever. Then we have to apply uh, the, the mango season in, in the north of Mexico goes from, from uh, 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 January, when it's flowering the, 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 the trees, and then the harvest is about June or the beginning of July. Then we have to, uh, uh, we uh, experimented some of the doses that, we need, that were needed to, to put in the trees, and then we established that we have to uh, spread the biofungicide every month at least three times during the, the, uh, the season. These were our first uh, uh, results in terms of the, of the uh, comparison of the chemical fungicide and the bacterial fungicide. This is, uh, this is normalized against the, uh, uh, the control. This is the control, which is the severity, which is a definition of the intensity of the, of the disease which is 100% is normalized with the, with the control. And you can see in this season, then uh, the, uh, the chemical uh, fungicide was able to reduce about 20% of the symptoms, whereas our, our biofungicide was able to reduce 40% of the symptoms. Of course, it is not possible to completely avoid the, the disease. You can control the disease, not, not, not completely disappear. But for instance, in this, this was very interesting because uh, this is the, how the mangoes look like after the application of the, our biofungicide, and this is uh, how they look with the uh, application of the chemical fungicide after uh, harvest. And you can see the severity of the, of the disease in this particular season. There was no statistical difference between the, the control and the chemical fungicide. But of course, this, the mango uh, uh, growers do not know that because they don't do this kind of experiments. And in this case, with our uh, product, the biological product, we were able to reduce 60% the symptoms of the, of the disease. Another interesting thing that we discovered, although we were not looking for, which is uh, one of the funny things of science that you sometimes discover things that you are not looking for. The, if you see the, the, the strength, uh, in, uh, the, the ferments of the, of the, of the mango uh, uh, fruits are very important for its, their commercialization. 
then if you reach this uh, level, 20 newtons, uh, measuring with uh, this uh, penetrometer is called, then you cannot commercialize these because they are very soft. And as you can see, when we apply our biological fungicide, then the firmness was higher at the beginning when they was harvest, and this is, uh, they uh, uh, storage the mangoes in a, in a, uh, in a refrigerator so at 10 degrees centigrade. And as you can see, the, either the, the control and the chemical fungicide after, let's say, eight days of storage in the refrigerator, lose the, the commercialization value, whereas our product is still uh, increases about three days more. Three days is very important for the exporters because they could, they could uh, it takes more or less between two, uh, one to two days to export to the United States from Mexico. Then that could make a, a big difference also uh, in, the gra in the graph doesn't look very uh, impressive. It is very important for the, for the mango exporters. Well, the problem now is, okay, we have, we have a, a, a very good uh, bacterial antagonist. It, the formulation, the liquid formulation worked in the field and it was even better than the chemical fungicides, but of course a liquid formulate uh, was not uh, practical for, for commercialization. Then we started to develop uh, a solid formulation. And basically the, 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 the development of the solid formulation implies some downstream processing, mainly spray drying. And we, after two years of work, uh, we, we were able to develop a, a solid formulation of the product, which uh, uh, has the, a, a, a long-term viability of the biomass, as you will see this. This is the shell life of the, of the product in the, in the, in the uh, uh, solid formulation. As you can see, after four years of storage, then you still have 80% of the viability. And this can be uh, adjusted. Even the the uh, the exponent uh, doesn't change. The exponent of the of the uh, count of, of microorganisms. And usually for for commercialization, the requirement is at least two years. This is at room temperature. I, w I have to say there is no need for refrigeration for this product. This it was developed for. Uh, and then uh, uh, now we have we have a, a very uh, stable and very effective uh, solid formulation. And uh, in that time, we published a, a paper in a non-scientific uh, journal, but a journal that, uh, of course, I don't put in my CV, but uh, my academic CV, because, of course, nobody cares about that uh, publication. It's a national publication in Spanish, uh, which is not uh, indexed. Uh, but who is read by the producers. And then uh, we were contacted by a company, which is called El Rodeo, which uh, gave us a different perspective to the, to the project, because at that time we had the formulation, the formulation worked, but what else? I mean, the, now uh, the point was that the, the users can, can use. Uh, just to tell you a story, we went to present these results to a, to a group of mango producers, and well, we, we explained the statistics and we explained the, uh, the variability and the, the control with the, the, the chemical fungicide. At the end, we asked, well, are there any questions? And then there's one of, of, the, of the persons where they uh, ask uh, for a question and say, how much does it cost? Well, uh, uh, we don't know. <laughs> uh, perhaps if you are interested in the technology, we are uh, with university professors. Uh, perhaps we can transfer the technology, we can have an, uh, an agreement with the university. And no, 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 that's too complicated. Okay, then uh, with this company, which is a, 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 an export company, the, uh, 
uh, its specialty is to export mango, not to produce mango, but they have to buy uh, mangoes to the producers. And they had exactly the problem I described at the beginning. They were, they were not able to get enough quantities of mango to export. They say that the, the exportation mango really was uh, very promising, and if they could get double the amount of mango, they could export double, uh, the, uh, twice the, the, the production they were. But they could not get uh, enough mango of good quality, of quality of exportation. Then this company offer a bonus to the producers if they use our biofungicide. Of course, this company tried the biofungicide first in a, a small uh, uh, orchard they, they had, and of course he, he, they were convinced that the, that, the, that the product worked. But of course, it was not enough to to try the product in, the, in their own orchards, but in other orchards because they mainly buy mango to other companies to export. And they offer a, a, a bonus to the companies that were, that accepted to, uh, to use the fungicide, provided they just could give you the, the protocol of use, of uses of the, of the, of the uh, biofungicide. And you see, the, this is the product, and of course, there are several ways that they uh, apply the, not only manually, but for instance, with this machine, they spread the, 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 the trees, or these are with, the, uh, with a kind of guns uh, to uh, spread the, uh, on the mango uh, tree. Then, uh, of course, we, we publish a paper in a scientific journal, which is in my CV, uh, and uh, we have, uh, as you know, uh, at least in, in Mexico and the United States, you have one year to file the patent uh, application after you publish the, the paper. You cannot do that, for instance, in Europe. Then we completely uh, lost the opportunity of patenting in, in Europe. But in Mexico, we uh, uh, filled a, a patent exactly one day before the, this year finished. But of course, it was a, a strong pressure of publishing. As a professor, of course, we have a strong pressure of, of publishing. But uh, we filled the patent one day bef before the expiration uh, uh, date for, for filling the patent. And well, we, have, we, have a, we thought at that time that we had an important, uh, effective product, a very reliable product, a very stable product, which work on a semi-commercial level. And then we, uh, as, as uh, university professors, started to advertise the technology to other companies in order to transfer the technology. Of course, what we wanted to do is just to transfer the technology to a company and then to, to get royalties from, the, from this company and they can uh, uh, distribute or, or produce the, the product with our technology. The technology is the property of the university, of course. And um, well, for about two years, we, we, we went to every single uh, Congress, uh, meeting of producers or whatever. And finally, well, we, we tried to transfer this technology, but uh, this cartoon uh, uh, illustrates very well what was the response of, the, of these companies, no? They say, for those in the back, they say, this really is an innovative approach, but I am afraid that we cannot consider it. It never has been done before. Well, it's just to illustrate that at, uh, after two years of, let's say, advertising the technology, because, of course, for, for a university professor, it's terrible to do that, to have to do that. I mean, you do the science, and somebody else has to do the advertisement. But this is not the case. You have to do the advertisements if you want that the, that the technology could be transferred to an industry. Then, about three industries approaches, but let's say, just to give you an idea of the, of the framework, uh, the biological control industry are small companies, Worldwide, they, they sell not more than $2 million, which for the industry standards is very, is very small. And the other big companies are mainly dedicated to genetic 
genetically modified plants. I mean, the, the big Monsanto and other companies, right? Then, who could be interested in this project? And then we uh, were contacted by three Mexican companies. And to make a long story short, after one year of negotiations between the university and these industries, the industries disappear. <laughs> of course, it was a matter of the bureaucracy of the, of the university. Uh, and the other is, well, the, at the end, the company were not interested because Mexican industry in general, biotech Mexican industry in general, is very conservative and very small still. Yeah. There is no, uh, uh, most of the companies are not really integrating technology as a, as a strategic uh, issue in, in their plans. Then the, there was two options. To keep advertising the technology, as, as you know, as a professor, it, it was not a, a very nice option and to leave the, the technology in, in a drawer and to wait until maybe somebody some, somewhere someday could be interested in this technology. And, uh, and the other, the other uh, option was to create a company to commercialize this product. And we took the second, the second approach. And then we create this small company which is, I say, is not a small company, it's a nano company, <laughs> which is now, now it's in fashion, all the nano, nano things, <laughs> nano companies as well. Well, this is a very small company. It was founded by myself, a colleague of mine, and an industrial partner, three, three uh, partners in the company. And then, uh, of course, what the company did later was to uh, make the scale up of the, of the process. Of course, we had the technology at the pilot plan level. This is the pilot plan of our, of our institute in Cuernavaca. And uh, we scaled up to a, a fermenter of 20,000 liters in an, in an industry, a contract fermentation. I have to say that uh, in order to do this, we have to sign a contract with the company, with the with the of, of the company with the university. But of course, just to make a long, very long, uh, a very difficult uh, story uh, short, uh, it took us nearly two years to, f to get an agreement with the, our own university on the terms of the technology transfer uh, conditions. Just to give you an idea of the issues that we're discussing, the, the university lawyer says that there was a very big conflict of interest. They say, okay, yes, we agree. We are professors, we are partners of the company at the same time, and we are transferring a technology that we as professors develop to a company as we as partners are trying to use, okay? Okay, yes, that, that's exactly what we want to do. <laughs> no, it, 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 it is not permitted. The, when we ask the lawyers where the law of the university says that it is not permitted, they couldn't find the law. But they say it, was, it sounded wrong. <laughs> okay? Because, of course, in the, the university law for technology transfer is that if you, if you as a professor develop a technology and this technology is transferred to an industry and you get royalties of this technology, 50% of the royalties goes to the pocket of the researcher. Okay, that's the law. Okay, that's, uh, but if the technology developers and the owners of the company are the same, why are we going to go to have 50% to our pockets? They say, where, where is forbidden? Let's, let's, uh, let's fix the, the conflict of interest. Well, it took us two years to sign an agreement between our, between our nano comp company and 
one of the problems at the end was that the university asked, the university lawyers asked us to prove that our company existed. <laughs> of course, because it's a, a small company, you don't, you don't have to do all these things of the notary uh, for, for the creation of the company. It's a very easy way to, to encourage the formation of small companies. And we have to hire a lawyer in order to prove the university lawyers that our company existed, legally, okay? Perhaps the university, a big university like UNAM, uh, had never signed a technology transfer agreement with such a small company. And of course, uh, uh, and the fact that this small company was founded by one of their professors, that was even more suspicious. And then we asked the, the, the lawyers, well, if, if this company had been founded by somebody else, my brother or <laughs> my daughter, right? <laughs> okay. What, what would be the difference? No, no problem. There is no conflict of interest. Well, we want to solve the conflict of interest. Well, just to, to, to finish the story, because it's a long story, uh, then we have, an, we have already the pressure of the uh, commercializing because there were some commercializing companies interested in commercializing the product. But how are we going to sell a product that whose, whose technology has not been transferred to the company? And then we have that pressure and we finally agree, we consulted with some lawyers and say, you have to, to, have, to, to, to have an agreement with the university lawyers. And then we agree that the royalties are not going to go to our pocket, but to our laboratories. Okay. And that solves the problem. Okay. It, it, it is, I mean, the, 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 our lawyers say it's, it is a, an illegal. Uh, uh, you have that right, okay? But if you fight for that right, it could take you three years. You are going to win but it could take you three, three years. And perhaps in three years time, there was no more interest of any other commercializing company. Well, this is the, 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 the trademark of our products. It's, it's called Fungifree. And of course, the other, the other point, important point now, as when we uh, signed the, the contract with the university, still we didn't have a product to sell. Because in order to sell a product in any country, in Brazil and in Mexico and in, in, in any other country, you need, you need to, to, to fulfill the requirements of two, at least two uh, 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 government, government agencies. The, the Ministry of Agriculture, which determines how effect, if your product is effective for the purpose you, you design the product then you have to get an approval, an official approval. Also, we have done nearly seven or eight uh, years testing in, 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 in mango orchards. We haven't had uh, legally done, uh, supervised by the Ministry of Agriculture. Then we have to repeat it, this for uh, another time, but under the supervision of, of officials of the Ministry of Agriculture. Then, after one year, we uh, got this, uh, uh, this permission, but the, the, the main uh, bottleneck for any product, not, not only for biofungicides, but in general for it, is the, the health approval. It's the, the equivalent of the FDA in the United States. Okay? You have to, in this case, you have to prove that your product works for the purpose you design it, and in, in this case, you have to prove that your, pro that your uh, product is not toxic for the environment and for people. Okay? This took us nearly three years to prove, and the file was more or less like this. Uh, we had to make uh, uh, all kind of toxicological uh, tests in fishes, in rabbits, in rats, in whatever. Okay? Uh, the toxicity, the uh, skin toxicity, eye toxicity, etc., etc., etc. Because you have to comply 
there is no uh, special law for bio, biologicals, bio, bio pesticides. It's only pesticides. And this, you have to comply with exactly the same requirements that a chemical pesticide has to do. And of course, you can imagine the difference between what is the, the, the fusion point of a bacillus subtilis, for instance. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, this is the results in which we uh, got the, the approval of the Ministry of Agriculture. As you can see, now we don't, we don't plot uh, this as the severity, but as the quality. Uh, damaged fruits and healthy fruits. This is the healthy fruits, and this is the uh, damaged fruits. Okay? Because for the market, the, the, the other uh, 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 units are merely academic. Because even if, if it's a little bit uh, damaged, it cannot be commercialized. Then it doesn't matter if it's too much or too, too less uh, damage. It's, it, it has the quality for exportation or it has no quality for exportation. And this is the, a summary of the test. As you can see, the control in a, in a control with a chemical fungicide, nearly 30% of the, of, the, of the harvest has the quality in order to export them, okay? If you use our biofungicide in different treatments, you can see you can at least double or triple that amount. Then you can get, you, you cannot get more mangoes, but you can get more mangoes with the quality needed for exportation. Then it's about, uh, instead of uh, having, uh, uh, and then with the biofungicides, we were able to get nearly 70% of the harvest of the quality of exportation. This is the, uh, a very important paper for the company to have the register as a formulator of plug, uh, pesticides. We got the, uh, in uh, 2011, this registration for our company. Then the company was incubated in, a, in an incubator of uh, the, the uh, which has the, uh, the, go the local government of the state of Morelos where we are located. They have a, a uh, a business incubator, and we, we were incubated for about two years in this incubator and learning about financial and accounting and things like that that are not uh, at all nice for researchers. But uh, in December 2010, we graduated. The company was graduated for the incubator. Then this is the diploma. And in, in June of 2020, we have the positive resolution from the Ministry of Agriculture. And in April 2011, we have the registration for the use in mango by the FDA uh, equivalent in Mexico. Then only after these resolutions, the product was able to sell the, as a product. This is the effectiveness product registration, another very important paper for a, for a company. And this is the most important paper for a company. <laughs> I don't want to, you, to read this, but the sanitary registrations, without this uh, paper, you cannot sell anything. And then I would say, before 2011, we didn't have anything in terms, of, commercially speaking. Although we have an excellent product, a very effective product, a very reliable product, a very stable product, then still, we didn't have a product to sell. After this sanitary registration, there, there were interest in companies, commercializing companies, but not before this. I have to say that uh, at the beginning of the project, I had no idea of what it was required to commercialize a product that we developed in our laboratory. And it was a matter of patience and fortunately, my two other partners, when, when we were uh, tired of the bureaucracy or tired of the lawyers or tired of the accounting, the others uh, uh, support us. And then there was at least one who wanted to, to go on. And that's a good thing to, to have at least three partners. <laughs> 
then uh, you remember that we filed a patent uh, just before, after one year of public, well, 364 days after <laughs> uh, uh, we published the paper, and then the, the patent uh, was uh, 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 granted uh, in October of on, on 2011. Then the patent of the project was uh, granted to the university, of course. We are inventors in the patent, but the, the patent rights are uh, owned by the university. Then we, we had a, a, all, all what I said before and a, a product that could be sold, but that, who are going to, to sell this product? Our nano company has no uh, the power nor the experience. Uh, uh, of course, as a, as a university professor, we are terrible in, in selling things in general. And, uh, but because we had the, this uh, certificate from the Ministry of Health, then uh, we contacted several commercializing uh, companies, and at the, at the end, we signed an agreement with a very uh, important multinational company, which uh, markets, uh, uh, is a market leader, in not only in Mexico, but in Latin America. And actually, we are now trying to uh, do the same process in Brazil, for instance, for the registration, which they say that the agency here is even worse than the FDA. <laughs> then, uh, perhaps if you invite me in 10 years, I could tell you another happy ending story <laughs> in Brazil. <laughs> then, but we sign a, an agreement between our, our, our company, which is a, a let's say, a, a, a technology company. The, the, the purpose of our, our, our company is not a commercializing company, but a technology developer company. And um, uh, we sign uh, this agreement with this company. And finally, in November 2012, uh, it was launched commercially, the product. Then this is the, this is the commercial product. And what is, I have to, uh, an important point to, to make, that in the label of the, of the product, it says, product formulated with te technology of the Institute of Biotechnology of the UNAM and the Centro de Investigación y Alimentación y Desarrollo Culiacán. That is the first product that is launched in the Mexican market by, by a spin-off of, of our institute. And there are other spin-offs in the in our institute, but this is the, the first product available in the market launched by a spin-off of, of, the, of the Institute of Biotechnology of the National University of Mexico. And it is uh, part of the other companies, for instance, some companies, some commercializing companies, didn't agree to put this in the label for some reason. And we insisted that. We insist in that point because it was very important for us and for the university. And we forget all about the lawyers. Okay? Then we, we took this and we gave a gift to the lawyers uh, with this product after two years. And then the product was launched in a very important agro uh, exhibition in Mexico. And then uh, FMNC has a, a, a very important stand and they uh, uh, try some pro test in zucchini because uh, they know that the best way to sell a product is to, to prove that it works. And they, they planted here zucchinis, and they, uh, they put the control, the chemical, and the biofungicide. But they didn't put a label. And they say when customers come, they say, which one do you like more? This one. Ah, this is the biofungicide. OK? And. Uh, for instance, this is the, some of the advertisement that they were doing. Of course, it, was, uh, it had been impossible for us as a company uh, to, to do this. Uh, if finally, uh, we start uh, uh, making trials in, to, because the product is a, is a, has a wide spectrum. Also, it was originally registered for 
mango anthracnose. Anthracnose is a very important disease for other uh, products, other fruits, mainly uh, avocado and papaya, which are, the markers are considerable even uh, larger than the, than the mango uh, market. And in May, uh, this May, we uh, had the registration from the Ministry of Health for using the product in avocado, papaya, and citrus fruits. And we have in the process of using the product for another purpose, which was not designed for that, but it worked as a growth promoter in berries mainly and in several other uh, crops. Then the, the market uh, uh, sounds promising for these other uh, 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 crops. Well, finally, I have to say that this uh, was a, a, a long project in which several institutions and several funding agents participate, mainly from the, from the UNAM, a, a, a large team, from the SEAF, the company that allows us to uh, really realize that the project has potential, uh, com commercial, uh, commercial potential. Uh, the uh, starting of a company, this company uh, employs three postgraduate students already, and then uh, uh, the company, uh, of course, now are developing the next uh, uh, products, and we hope that if uh, for the first product it took us 12 years to, to go from the bench to the, to the market, the second product could take uh, uh, particularly shorter than that. This is the, the institution in which we incubated our, our company, which was provided by the uh, Science and Technology Council of the local state of Morelos, where the Institute of Biotechnology is located, and several uh, funding agents, all of them public, I would say, from the National Science and Technology Council and the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and the, the government of the state of Morelos, the local government. And well, for you, if you are interested in more details about this long story, then we publish a paper in the Electronic Journal of Biotechnology. Uh, perhaps you have some copies of this, uh, uh, the, the, the abstract of the paper, if you are interested, because we believe that it was interesting not only of doing this project, but, but testifying, uh, telling the story about all what I have told you today, and more details, of course, that I don't have I didn't have time to tell you. You can see the whole story in this paper, which is available online. And thank you very much. Uh, how did you finance the uh, registration and the sanitation experiments? Because I, I, I can understand that uh, normal scientific research funding agencies would not be interested in, in, in supporting this type of uh, activities. So how could you do that? The, the local uh, government of the state of Morelos launched a, a, an initiative in that particular year when we, were, when we uh, uh, started the company. Actually, that was one of the reasons to start the company, because it was, that was the, this opportunity. And in, in this case, the, the philosophy of this uh, fund uh, is that uh, it has to be uh, to, the, to, the, to the academic institutions, provided there is a company associated. And there, it was possible to finance the, all the regulatory process and the scale up as well. Then we uh, uh, finance it with that grant, the, the patent in, we have patent applications in three countries. In, uh, besides Mexico, we have in, in, uh, in Brazil, in Ecuador, and in the United States just for strategic reasons, not because they are mango producers. And um, the scale up of the, of the project, of the process as well, and the registration. Then the, the registrations cost us more than $50,000, more or less, altogether. But it was very fortunate, um, because when we were in the dilemma of, uh, I mean, keeping doing the same that we, we had been doing or starting a company, uh, uh, the, the director of this center of incubation told us, why don't you start a company and develop the project? He say, uh, I, I, and I replied to him, I don't have money and I don't have time as a professor. 
He says, no problem. We solve the problems of the money, and you solve the problem of the time. <laughs> and it's exactly what it happened, fortunately. Otherwise, it would have been uh, impossible, let's say, in other, it was. And uh, interestingly, this fund uh, is not, uh, is not uh, 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 applicable anymore. They, they, they launched that for two years only. And they didn't, they didn't, they didn't uh, receive many proposals, by the way. That was the, the reason they canceled this, this project. But for us, it was uh, fundamental. So you said that uh, you didn't have time. So how did you make time as, were you, did you like stop becoming like a professor for a while? <laughs> like, well, I have to question. comply with the, with the university regulations. There's, I have eight hours free per week to dedicate to other, to other things. And I took advantage of that. And uh, of course, we have another partner from outside the university who was in charge more of the administrative part of the, of the, uh, of the project. But of course, it's, it's, uh, you have to dedicate weekends, and uh, mainly weekends, uh, to and, uh, one of my partners, the other, uh, he spent the, his eight hours uh, uh, of the, off the university in the uh, incubation uh, facilities, then because they they give you a, a, an office telephone uh, email, <laughs> the main se a secret you can you can share a secretary, uh, uh, an accountant, a lawyer, who uh, and I, I would say one of the most important things of the incubation period was. The, the contact with the advisors for a specific uh, issues of the company, in particular with the regulatory projects. Then I have to say that uh, this, this paper was written by a very multidisciplinary team. Then Leobardo Serrano and Carlos Roberto Gutierrez are my two other partners. Raul Allende is a phytopathologist from the institution from uh, the north of the country. Karina Valderas was the only employee of the company for many years and a former uh, master student of ours. Uh, Martin Patiño and Mario Trejo were, who were dealing with the business with the university. They are uh, 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 academic staff of the university, but who help us to deal with the, the university lawyers. Miguel Angel Wong is the uh, from the company of who, El Rodeo Fruit, who was crucial to, to see a commercial perspective to the, to the company. Emma Rayo was our, our advisor in, in uh, regulatory issues, particularly health issues. And Dario Isauro and Carlos Jurado are members of the commercialization company, FMC. Then, as you can see, uh, I, I, ha I have to say, uh, it is also interesting uh, to tell, I don't have the time, I, I don't pretend to do that, but to tell the story of how w we wrote this paper. Because it's, it's very difficult if, you, if, if, if with colleagues, academics, it's not easy. Can you imagine with a completely different expertise, uh, completely different English accents, <laughs> etc. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, is uh, we employ, and even the, this uh, incubation um, office uh, supported us. For, they pay the, the salary of Karina Valderas for one year. And that, that was another, and that, that was the reason she did mostly all the uh, uh, paperwork the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the company. Well, okay. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, enthusiasm, and I think that was very appropriate for our young fellows here to see that it's not easy, but it's possible to really develop technology in Mexico and Brazil are very similar in several aspects, and all uh, this. Uh, we not, do not have a culture of uh, innovation and uh, in, how it dialogues with uh, academy and that will be, con be constructed along the way. 
So I think you have contributed a lot further. I have to say a, a, a final comment because I expected that question, but it, it didn't come. <laughs> uh, how did I survive as a university professor ah, good not, question. Publi not publishing papers of this? Of this? I publish, of course, in other, in other res research lines. It is impossible in Mexico and in general worldwide to survive as a university professor if you don't publish. And of course, in this case, for this project, we publish only two international papers in 12 years. Okay? We publish another uh, local but commercial papers, but who, which was, were crucial for the success of the project. We tell that story in the, in the, it is, I would say, it is important to publish paper in international journals, and we still producing, uh, uh, I mean, 80% of my productivity do not come from this project, from other projects. But if, if I had not had the, the chance to do that, it would have been impossible to survive as a professor for 12 years to do this. Then, uh, I mean, it, you have to publish, and I like to publish. I prefer publishing than patenting. <laughs> uh, patenting is a, is a very complicated process, and even the language, it's not English, it's not Spanish, it's patentees. And, uh, but you have to do that if you want to, to do technology uh, development. And uh, you have to uh, play several roles, as, as I told you here. But uh, I'm still a professor, I want to be a professor, but I, I, I like being part of the company as well, because the, the, let's say the, uh, the reward of having a product that you develop that is already in the market is really nice.